You're on. Oh. Hello. Can you see me? Can you hear me? How? I filmed this yesterday in the past, but yet we are in the present and you're watching me. How? The answer is simple. Electricity. My name is Michael Faraday and I'm the greatest scientist you've never heard of. I was born on September 22, 1791 in England. At the age of 14, I was an apprentice in a bookshop. And during the day, I would bind the books, and during the night, I would study them. An interesting story about my youth was when one day, I went to school. Now, this was the equivalent of about first grade. And while I was in school, I had a horrible list. And the teacher asked me to say the word rabbit. Instead, I pronounced it wabbit. She asked me for my name because she thought I was joking. And I said Michael Fawaden. She beat me with a ruler and kicked me out of school. I never went to school again. Now, with my mind implemented on the idea of electricity, I decided to do some work. At around the age of, oh, I don't know, 23, I went to the Royal Institution of Britain to go see a sort of performance by a world-renowned scientist, Humphrey Davies. He was an interesting man, and during his lecture, I took 300 page-long notes about his lecture. So, with those notes, I decided to make a book, and I published the book, only one copy, and I decided to go give it to Mr. Davies to see if he was impressed with what I had done. He was impressed, and he decided to employ me as his assistant. I lived upstairs in the Royal Institute. During the day, I would help Davy with, with experiments as his assistant. And by night, I lived upstairs with my wife, Sarah. Your martini, sir. Thank you. Where was I? Oh, yes. It was what, during one of these experiments that Humphrey Davy got injured. He was working with sodium and water, and it suddenly combusted in front of his face, and he lost his eyesight. So for a short period of time, I was in charge. Now it's time to get to the geeky part of the film. It was at this time that I decided to, quote unquote, take over of the Royal Institution of Britain since Humphrey Davy, my boss, was injured. I decided to conduct some of the experiments that I wanted to do. And since I was interested in electricity, I decided to search that room. And at this time, mid-1800s, people already knew what electricity was. They just did not know what it could be used for. So I decided to see what powers lie underneath. So, I decided to conduct my first experiment, and it would later be known as the homopolar motor experiment. With this experiment, as I have on my board, there is a pool of chlorine liquid. In this pool, there is a metal pole, about this long, attached inside the pole. And the pole is attached to an iron ring. The iron ring is then attached to a battery, which the battery is then attached to a switch. Up until this point, as I said before, people already knew what electricity was. People already knew that it was light and that it had power, but it had no practical impact. What I did was take the world's most famous light show and turn it into the world's most powerful source of power. Almost done? Yes, sir. All right. Now, when I completed my experiment, many people were against me because they were saying electricity is a form of sorcery or dangerous. And yes, they have the correct points. It is dangerous. We all know we can get electrocuted. Uh, sorcery? I, I can agree with them. 
What would you do if you were a caveman and you saw fire for the first time? What would your reaction be? I am assuming that their reaction was just like the caveman. They didn't know what it was. They didn't know what it, what it did, what it was for, where it came from. All they saw was just a flash of light in front of their eyes. And I guess you could say that I changed the world with this experiment. I also did later experiments, and I was a chemist at one point. I did many experiments in chemistry. Most of them were with chlorine. Your martini sensor. I got it. Thank you. Chlorine being the most famous one. And I also decided to do later experiments with electricity. Now, this is about, I don't know, seven, eight years after Humphrey Davy passed away. So now I was the president of the Royal Institute of Great Britain. One of my later experiments, called the Iron Ring Coil, was very similar to my first one. This experiment would show the interaction between electricity and magnetism. Now, it's very complicated to explain with words, but luckily I have it on my board, so if you would like to know more about this experiment, please check out my board. I had many other experiments. As I said, my breakthrough one, the iron ring coil apparatus, is still on display in the Royal Institution of Great Britain to this very day. If I were to explain every single one of my experiments, I would be here for days on end. So that's why I con constructed this board with the most famous of my experiments. Other experiments of mine and inventions and discoveries include the Faraday cage, which is a, a metal cage that insulates you from electricity. The Faraday's dynamo, which is later or now known as the electric dynamo. Also, the explanation is there. Now, many people don't know me. Oh, yeah. Can I have a, a little bit of the special piece? Yes, sir. Thank you. Many people don't know exactly what I did. And it's kind of hard to explain, really, what I did without sounding repetitive. But without me, you wouldn't be able to see me or hear me. You wouldn't have this. You wouldn't have anything that uses electricity that's modern today. Now, someone eventually might have came along and discovered what I discovered, invented what I invented, and experimented what I experimented on. But we might be living in a darker path. And by darker, I mean one that's not as lightly... <laughs> and by darker, I mean one that's not as lightly lit by lights with electricity. I was then diagnosed with memory loss, and I could not remember most of my earlier works and experiments, and that really set me off. I could just finish, sir. Thank you. Another reason why people don't know who I am was because of my lack of school. I've always been a bright person in life with much knowledge of the world and how it works. But when I experimented with the iron ring coil apparatus, I just could not do the math to prove it. I just couldn't. Mm, this is good, thank you. I just could not do the math. It was until earlier that I used to believe that school was not necessarily needed, but more of a rich kid's luxury. Later after I died, a man by the name of James Clerk Maxwell came along and he was a very bright person and he did the math. And people then realized that I was right, but it was too late. He got the credit for it, not me. One example of why I'm important is this. Albert Einstein, one of the brightest men that have ever walked the earth, had three pictures of people in his office. Isaac Newton, James Clerk Maxwell, and me. 
Michael Faraday. I was diagnosed. Why? Where? I already said I was diagnosed with memory loss. That doesn't matter. You forgot. God, I just cracked myself up. That Anyways, is great. 10 out of 10. Since I had memory loss, I started to develop signs of Alzheimer's, and you know how that story ends. I died at the age of, I believe, what was it? I forget. 75 was this? Yeah, it was 75. At my house. 1876 at the age of 75. 75. I was offered a burial site next to Isaac Dune at Westminster Abbey but I declined it because I never lived as a rich person. I always believed that in my Christian beliefs that a person should be humble, and that a person should cling on to what really matters to them most. Basically, needs, not wants. So I decided to be buried in Highgate Cemetery next to my wife, Sarah. I hope you enjoyed this presentation because I enjoyed giving it to you guys. Thank you. We're done? Yeah. We're done? We're done. So what are we going to do now? What are you doing? Stop filming.